good afternoon. <clears throat> I'd like to start by reflecting on the tragedy that occurred in Parkland, Florida one year ago today, where 14 students and three teachers were killed. My sincere sympathy goes out to the friends and loved ones of those lost, as well as to the entire school and community who endured such a senseless, tragic, and horrific event. As you all know, almost simultaneously, we came ever so close to our own tragedy right here in Vermont. To the Fairhaven community, thank you for your courage in supporting each other. I know this has been a difficult year. Despite the challenges you've faced, you've made a difference across Vermont. And I'm pleased to have Brooke Olson Farrell, the superintendent of the Addison Rutland Supervisory Union, which includes Fairhaven High School, here with us today. Brooke, I thank you for your leadership and care for your students, especially following that very difficult situation. In response to the averted threat in Fairhaven, the community, the state, law enforcement, educators, and elected officials stepped up to take quick action to strengthen the safety of our schools and communities. But this is an area where we must continue to focus, which is why I'm pleased to be here today to announce a joint initiative between my administration and the Vermont NEA. Don Tinney will share details next, but in summary, we are partnering to announce a public service uh, announcement contest. We are inviting students to create a See Something, Say Something PSA, which will be used by the Agency of Education, the Vermont NEA, and others to promote awareness and the importance of reporting school safety threats across the state. I can't underscore enough the value of this initiative from my perspective. As I pointed out last year, it was only by the grace of God, and more importantly, the courage of a young woman who spoke up when she saw something that wasn't right. In my opinion, it's because of her efforts, we in Vermont didn't suffer a tragedy like Parkland. It's our hope that by raising awareness about the importance of reporting threats of violence of any kind, we can further strengthen the safety of our schools and communities. And Vermont will continue to be one of the safest and healthiest states in the country. I want to thank the Vermont NEA for partnering on this effort. And I want to recognize the work of so many who contribute to the safety of our schools and communities, including our agency, agency of education, Department of Public Safety and local law enforcement, Vermont Emergency, Emergency Management, the School Safety Center, the School Crisis Planting, Planning Team, and all our educators, administrators, and school employees. Thank you for your work, and thanks uh, for being here today as well. I also want to give a special call out to Rob Evans, who leads our school safety center. Uh, he couldn't be here today, uh, but his leadership and expertise are critical to this work. And finally, before I turn it over to Vermont NEA President Don Tinney, to describe this contest, I also want to recognize that today is Suicide Prevention Day here at the State House. It's so important uh, for us to uh, bring attention to this issue, and I appreciate those who are here today to do so. So with that, Don, thank you. Thank you, Governor Scott. Nothing is more important than the safety and security of our schools that protect our students from harm. While we are fortunate to live and work and learn in one of the safest states in the nation, recent events make it abundantly clear that what has happened elsewhere can happen here. As we mark the grim anniversary of the Parkland shootings and continue to mourn the deaths of 17 wonderful people, we are reminded that but for the voice of students, tragedy could have visited us here. As Governor Scott said, it was a young adult who alerted authorities and helped thwart a potential deadly shooting at Fairhaven Union High School. And just a few weeks ago, another young person helped prevent a similar possibility in Middlebury. We know that students listen to their peers. That is why my fellow educators and I are proud to work with the governor to unleash the creativity of our students in helping make sure our schools are a safe haven for everyone, especially the young people whose parents entrust us with their care every single day. This contest calls on our middle and high school students to work on 25 second or 55 second video spots 
that will urge their peers to talk to teachers, administrators, community members, or parents if they are aware that fellow students are contemplating hurting themselves or others. The spots, which will be made in connection with an established digital technology or video production program in school, should highlight the simple fact that it takes the entire community to make us truly safe in a way that students can relate to. It is our hope that together we can prevent a tragedy before it starts. And I'd like to turn it over to Public Safety Commissioner Tom Anderson. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, see something, say something. It seems so easy. It seems like such a simple concept. But we know that it's not. People are often afraid or worried to speak up or tell someone that something doesn't seem quite right. And that's especially true for young, for young people. Uh, we have to change that. This initiative is designed to empower students to be proactive in keeping their schools and their communities safe. Frankly, students are uniquely equipped to stand as an important line of defense against violence in schools. Uh, we just heard the NEA chair say that sometimes they, they listen to their peers. Sometimes that's the only people they listen to. Um, no one has their fingers on the, on the pulse of what's happening in our schools, with their peers, and on social media like students do. What, what better way to empower students to feel comfortable about speaking up than by having students develop the message? We need our kids' talent to teach their peers, their teachers, their parents, frankly all of us, about the importance of speaking up. Empowered students need to be a big part of, the of our effort to prevent school violence. The last 12 months have been eye-opening in Vermont. One can only imagine how different this state might have been if one brave young person had not said something to authorities about the things she had heard from Jack Sawyer. But that was not the only instance in which a teenager spoke up and averted a potential act of violence at school. A brave student in Middlebury spoke up. A brave student in Linden spoke up. And both of those resulted in appropriate actions being taken. Through these incidents, we have learned that Vermont is not immune to the threats and tragedies experienced in schools across the country. We have learned important lessons from these experience, experiences, and we have used those lessons to inform our shaping of school safety and preparedness efforts statewide. So I want to encourage every single student in the state of Vermont to enter this video contest. We need your talent, your ideas, and your engagement. And even if you don't enter the video contest, you can always help us uh, help, uh, help our efforts. Uh, the Vermont School Safety Center is all ears. You can reach out via schoolsafety.vermont.gov to share ideas or concerns. And if you see something, say something to a teacher, to an administrator, to a parent, to a cop, to anyone who might be able to help. Finally, I want to acknowledge the work of the Vermont School Crisis Planning Team and my team at the Department of Public Safety for their continued work on school safety issues. I particularly want to thank Rob Evans, as the governor did. He has really been uh, the tip of the spear on this, and to Don Tinney for their work on this initiative. It's now my pleasure to turn the podium over to Deputy Secretary Heather Boucher. Good afternoon. As Governor Scott and others have noted already this afternoon, there are few things more important to a community than the safety and well-being of its children and adolescents. Clearly, ensuring that our schools are safe, welcoming places for all students is one of the most important roles we have as state leaders. With this paramount, paramount responsibility in mind, the AOE, Agency of Education, is proud to support the governor's partnership with the NEA on this competition. Asking students to take ownership of this important topic through a school safety PSA is a great way to make safety engaging for students and tie it to their learning in the classroom. One of the really appealing aspects of the See Something, Say Something campaign is that it helps students and adults become better upstanders. If you're not familiar with this term, it means standing up and taking action when you hear or see something that is potentially dangerous or just, as Commissioner Anderson said, not right. This is as opposed to being a bystander, where one simply observes and doesn't take action. I want to point out it takes great courage and experience to be a good upstander. That's why there are many ways students can do so. As we've heard, they can tell an adult when they see something. 
Uh, they can also interrupt a concerning interaction by inviting the victim to walk away with them. They can speak out and identify a problematic behavior in the moment, saying, hey, that's not cool, what you just said. And I think it's important because this is all part of a continuum of making our schools very safe. Um, the action taken will depend largely on the upstander's own personality, experience, and comfort level. And there's room for all types of actions. That's what is great about this work. And particularly today, we're, of course, hi highlighting um, if you see something, say something. By investing in and offering training modules that help both students and adults better understand the options they have, we can truly prevent awful consequences, such as those that we've heard about today and that, as we know, have, have almost occurred in our own um, cherished state. So in sum, I'm here to affirm the Agency of Education's strong commitment to improved and consistent school safety. We will do all we can to help coordinate and move forward this important initiative. Thank you. With that, we'd be happy to answer any questions. How much cash is up for grabs? Um, Don, so do you have that? Sure. <laughs> you so have the money? We do have the money, unless you want to give me some more. Uh, <laughs> so the first prize will be a $1,000 check to the program that, that wins it's a, in the schools, and then second prize is 500, and the third prize is $250. In addition to that, the, the winning team um, will also get to be a state trooper for the day, and uh, so to see another side of law enforcement, as well as uh, tours of broadcast facil facilities. Uh, the, the prize goes to the, the program? To the program. Does that mean the school, or to? Right, so it would be to, to the school program where the, where the video is produced. All right. And have you already enlisted some uh, AV clubs or, or academic programs to teach video production to be a part of it? Yeah, absolutely. So I've been talking with Anthony Sorrentino, who is the teacher of videography at BFA St. Albans Northwest Tech Center, who's been helping me develop the, the guidelines um, and what was doable and all that. And, I happened to be up there on Monday and ran into one of my former students who's in the program and he's already excited to take it on. So don't tell anybody else that they had a head start on this. <laughs> Don, there is a, an age limit on that, right, on the production? Yes. I, I, yeah. saw, I saw Neil's <laughs> eyes light up. I thought he was going to yeah, be a pretty, pretty law enforcement for the day. <laughs> going back to high school. <laughs> <laughs> How far, uh, where do you think we are at with school safety overall? You know, what's been accomplished in the last year? What do you, what's next on the, on the list of things yeah. to take care I, of? I think we've, uh, we've come a long way. It's obviously with the $5 million worth of, uh, worth of grants, um, making some improvements throughout the, the state. Uh, this is going to be an ongoing effort. We have, we propose another million and a half dollars um, in, the, in the budget for this year uh, to take care of some uh, unmet needs. Uh, and I believe that this may be an ongoing effort uh, as we move forward. So uh, the legislature uh, look forward to the uh, discussion with them on this. And I, and I believe that they uh, have the same, same thoughts that we need to take care of our kids. Uh, you mentioned Suicide Prevention Day here at the State House. Did you see or hear anything today that made you rethink a waiting period? Well, obviously, as I've said before, I don't believe that we need to change our, our gun laws at this point in time. I understand uh, how tragic this is, and, and uh, my, my heart and sympathy goes out to those who have been affected. I think we've all been affected uh, by this in some way, but I'm not sure that it solves the problem. Uh, and again, I'm, uh, I'm willing to listen, uh, and I'm sure that it will get some, uh, uh, get some time in the legislature in order to make a consideration. But, but I'm just not sure that that's the answer uh, to the to the problem. We have to go to the underlying, the root of the problem, and that's why, you know, my uh, my prevention uh, task force uh, that uh, is going to be coming forward uh, is taking a look at uh, some of the underlying issues of of uh, some of these uh, the root causes. Um, local government day here in the state house, and a lot of local officials are pretty upset by your budget because um, they say it results in a $6.6 .6 million reduction in state aid to town highway programs. Um, why did you need to move forward with that cut? Well, first of all, I think, uh, I think we need to be accurate about what that is. The, the $6 million was 
um, an increase over the last couple of years for stormwater mitigation. And, and that's where the money went to stormwater mitigation. Uh, it wasn't to roads and, and bridges per se. Um, so with our focus uh, going to different areas in terms of uh, water treatment and cleanup and so forth, uh, we want to uh, we want to shift the focus and, and there's some a reduction in federal funds uh, for matching funds we had to make ends meet it's a constant struggle but I, again this was in uh, stormwater mitigation any I'm sorry? other on topic questions oh oh i'm sorry well no well there yeah they could be some of these <laughs> are there any other questions for the group here I'd actually like to ask the superintendent question. Oh, there you are. Um, how are things going um, back at home? I, mean, I think I think they're going well. Um, we have a tremendously resilient community um, in terms of our staff and students, and we really have taken a community caretaking approach where everyone has. Um, banded together to really support one another and the school. And um, I fully believe that Fairhaven is one of the safest schools in Vermont, if not the country. Did you, did you get any additional security through the grant program? Um, we only received um, about $9,000, and that is because um, many of the um, infrastructure pieces outlined in the grant we had already done previous to the grant. Students will be receptive to the kinds of uh, you know peer-to-peer -peer call that this effort is encouraging. Absolutely, um, this is something that we promote in our school. Um, we active we actively talk to students about the see something, say something campaign, um, and we already have students that will come forward if they're concerned about a staff or student. What what kind of change, if any, have you seen in the students at the school? Since this all um, I think we have really taken um, the approach of really um, in enabling them, um, making them feel empowered, um, in control of their own safety, and that has to do with the See Something, Say Something campaign, options-based training drills, and so I think all of those pieces um, really um, help them feel safer. You have, have you seen any increases in mental health services or um, school absences or anything that might reflect there's some ongoing emotional trauma? So initially after the um, event we did have an uptick in student absences. Um, since that time um, we have had an increased number of students that have opted out on school choice or early college. Um, the exact numbers that are attributed to this event, I'm not sure. But you know, we're, cons we're, we're still working with um, traumatologists and um, have a therapy dog program and other, other pieces in place to really help the students with resiliency. Um, following the arrest and everything, there's a great deal of fear about Jack Sawyer in particular. I understand that he's moved back to his father, I believe. Is that something that's communicated to you, something that you communicate to the community? Um, it's not something that I can really talk about at this point um, because of where, where the case is. What do you think would be an effective PSA? <laughs> um, I am, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> I think, wow, I'm really on the spot here. Um, <laughs> that's, why, that's why we're leaving it up to the kids. <laughs> kids are far more creative <laughs> than us adults. Well, what do you think that they're not, I mean, obviously, we have three examples where it worked. You know, we right. We already know this, but right. how do you think we really, how do, we, how do we really reach these kids and make sure that everyone hears this message? So I, I think, you know, I have three teenage sons of my own, and I think, um, just stressing with them that it's not um, tattling on someone or you know that this is really about taking care of one another and um, making them feel secure in that in that decision I think as well you know my fear is that <clears throat> if we don't continue uh, to to uh, 
talk about this and, and have these types of programs and and make sure that people know uh, students know that they can they should say something if they see something they'll forget just like we've forgotten in a lot of ways we take things for granted over time it's lost I don't think it's lost upon many of the students of Vermont right now because it's so real it happened a year ago but what happens you know two years from now or three years from now we have to be it's continual training I believe uh, to make sure that we don't let our guards down Hopping back to the infrastructure discussion, uh, a lot of cities and towns here are asking for a force and increase in the gas tax because they can't fix the roads. Um, what, do you, what do you think of that? You mentioned taxes and everybody runs for the hills. Yeah. Um, obviously, uh, you know, our infrastructure is really important to us. Uh, and we're seeing, it, you know, this is, this is a result of uh, a lot of our vehicles becoming much more efficient uh, than they were at one time. So, um, you know, it's good news in some respects that we're getting uh, better miles per gallon, but uh, when we're charging tax by the gallon, it means uh, a few, a fewer dollars coming in the coffers, and we're all suffering from that. Um, we, uh, in, in terms of like the zero emission vehicles that we're promoting, uh, we, we need to look for it to make sure that there's a source of funding uh, to, to uh, fund the transportation programs that we have. But, uh, but again, it's a constant struggle for us across the board, whether it's water or sewer or storm or our roads, our bridges, um, you know, it's a constant battle. We have made some ground uh, in terms of our bridge infrastructure, uh, incremental, and that's, uh, that's good news, but uh, we have a long ways to go. But uh, Vermont League of Cities and Towns signed a resolution saying they support this four cent yeah. increase in the gas tax as long as it's you know carved out and dedicated to, to town highway programs would you support that yeah I'm, I'm not in favor of an increase in the gas tax at this point in time no. the select board chair in waterbury says his town needs about 25 million dollars in road work well they're going to get that uh, really soon because there's a big project that just uh, was uh, left in their community that's going to redo main street so they're going to get there but, so they're going to get Main Street, but they're not going to get all the roads, and most right. towns are not going to get a fraction of what they need. Is do Vermonters just need to accept that we're never going to catch up, and we just are going to triage? Well, I don't know if, we, if we're never going to uh, catch up because we we are catching up uh, little by little. We're catching up. There are better methods in terms of construction. We're learning a lot more, and uh, and I and I believe that we are making incremental gains, but but not fast enough. Obviously, I mean we just especially with the with the, the difference, uh, the climate change that they were experiencing, uh, the incredible uh, ranges of temperatures, the frost, uh, freeze frost uh, cycles that, that they were seeing, the thawing um, has made uh, for surfaces in particular problematic. So do you think town governments need more money than they have now in order to maintain their roads? So, I mean, do you agree with the premise? They're saying we need more money if we're gonna responsibly maintain our highway infrastructure. Well, I, here, here's my answer to all of that. I mean, it's a common theme that I, I've talked about a lot. We need more people in Vermont. Uh, if we want better roads and better bridges, we need more taxpayers. If we want, uh, if we want, want more uh, of our water and sewer infrastructure, we need more taxpayers. We need more people here. We're, that's, that's our problem. We don't have as many people paying into the system as we once did. And the aging demographic is, is, is resulting and uh, fewer people in our workforce. I mean, these are these are real issues. And so what we need to do is focus on that in that area and bring more people in so that we have more uh, more revenue. As you as you work to incentivize Vermonters to buy EVs, do you have a plan to capture a, a there, revenue source yeah. that will help fix the road? There is a there is a, a proposal, and and I believe that the, this is something that's working its way through. Uh, I'm looking for help at this point, uh, <laughs> but I believe that uh, from the charging infrastructure uh, for the, the uh, EVs that there's going to be, there's a proposal to, uh, to charge a portion of that uh, so that it can go back to the transportation fund, but I'll, I'll check that out to be sure. That, that was introduced last year, uh, but I don't remember any of the details. Yeah, I think there was maybe a study done on it, and I believe we're moving forward. I believe yeah, that, forward. that as opposed to like a mileage. Right. Like that. Yeah, the pocket is doing great design right now um, on how right. to uh, design charge, uh, charges, whether it's home or public infrastructure. 
um, et cetera. So that is something they are currently doing. The charge uh, for them to do this rate design was included in last year's T-bill. You uh, proposed a fee on solar developments and other renewable developments. Uh, there's a lot of concern about that because that's going to slow development of the renewable sector, renewable sector in general. Uh, what are your about that? Yeah. Well, everyone wants uh, you know some oversight of some of these projects, and, and the fee uh, structure is part of that oversight. So uh, I think it's necessary uh, in terms of making sure that these projects are viable, and this is what we want. So we need. Uh, the fees in order to do that. What do you think about the Act 46 uh, sort of concession uh, what the Education Committee came out with for Act 46 that was passed by the House? Oh, the yeah, I, I'm supportive of giving them more time. I think it has a lot of merit to pass with a large amount of support. Uh, we'll see what happens in the uh, in the Senate. I haven't uh, I haven't spoken to anyone in the Senate to see uh, whether that's acceptable or not. But uh, from my standpoint, I, I think it uh, fills that need. Uh, Senate Economic Committee passed the minimum wage bill out. Have you taken a look at it yet? I have not. It's probably, I don't, I wouldn't imagine it's much different than it was last year. Yeah, but, it's but substantially I similar. Yeah. Any evolution? Your uh, perspective again, on that? My, my concerns are the same. Uh, I, I fear for our rural areas of the state, particularly the eastern side of our state, uh, where we're right across the, the river from New Hampshire, who has a Minimum wage of 725. You said you uh, couldn't support an increase in the gas tax. What's your primary concern? Just a more tax burden on the mines. I mean, again, let's let's talk about New Hampshire. I don't know if you've been to New Hampshire lately, uh, but you don't. You only have to drive across the river and enjoy about a what I saw one day of a 30 or 40 cent uh, reduction in the per gallon cost of, of fuel. <coughs> got a, a, I don't know, near record, if not record, number of freshmen in the house this year. I don't know to what extent you've gotten around and talked to all of the new faces around here, but uh, what do you think? Well, so far, so good. I mean, you know, we've, uh, this is a clean slate, as I said, a different approach. Um, we, uh, the reception's been, been good, cordial, civil. Uh, we, we appreciate that. Uh, we're trying to uh, pay more attention uh, as well. We have the freshmen in for a breakfast uh, at the uh, on the fifth floor, just to get to know them a little bit and be a resource for them. So um, I'm encouraged by what I'm seeing. And that uh, a lot of them are younger, and that sort of represents the kind of Vermont you're trying to exactly. Promote. If we can just you know work together on trying to find proposals that will incentivize and bring more people into the state, uh, a younger, uh, healthier population helps everything. What's the word on how infants in the workplace is going? Uh, we've had some um, feedback from some of the agencies. There's quite a lot of support uh, for this, and they're working their way through it. So uh, we'll uh, we'll see who the first is. But I, I'm not aware of anyone that's uh, that's uh, taken advantage of it there at this point. Possibilities. But, they, but we've we've heard there's a few pop possibilities. We're not we're not naming names. No <laughs> yet, though, in the workplace. Not, not that I've seen, uh, but I know um, within the next. Month or two, uh, yeah. there may be some. Yeah. 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 There's a, a, a couple of bills that have raised the smoking age to 21, uh, and I think one that would empower municipalities to change their own smoking age. Do you support either of those things? Yeah, you know, I'm not opposed, but I'm not leading the charge on this. Uh, we'll see how it works its way through in the legislature. So it's something that you could support? If, uh, if there's enough support, and, and you know, I'm, I'm not a I'm not a smoker myself, uh, never have been, and, uh, and, I, and I see the dangers of, of smoking and vaping and so forth, so uh, I'm not opposed to it, but I'm not leading the charge. You've never smoked a cigarette? Never have. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Go through life. You want to talk about a cigarette? <laughs> uh, Vermont used to, used to have uh, community rating in its health insurance plans, and. Uh, people didn't seem to like it back years ago because it, it uh, made it things more expensive for certain subsectors of Vermont. Uh, sounds like you're you're talking about at least the age rate setting. Um, why does that make sense, and isn't that going to drive up costs on older Vermont? Well, no, I, you know, we'll see. I mean, this is something that we we want to take a look at. Uh, we're we're just asking 
uh, for others to, to at least consider it. Uh, we desperately need, as I've said, uh, we need more people in the state, particularly more workers, youth, uh, and so forth. Um, so some of that is to, to encourage them to stay here. And, and uh, I talk about the affordability of our state and, and health care is a, one of the costs associated with that. So if we can encourage, if this is a, a, an attraction, if it, this will bring more people into the state as a result, uh, then it spreads the pool, it builds, uh, builds the pool. So a younger, healthier p uh, population that doesn't, you know, on average, doesn't utilize uh, health care as much, uh, I think would be, would be beneficial. So it could actually, uh, you know, help with the overall cost of, of health care. Has your team done any preliminary work to determine if there will be winners and losers? No, I don't believe we've gone that far. Uh, but again, we are in the beginning stages. We want to uh, to see if there's any appetite for this, uh, and particularly when we're we're trying to find again different approaches, different ways to bring more people in. And, and when you look at the there's a category, I'm going to say 25 to 35. Um, there's there's about 10 percent uh, that don't have uh, health care now, and probably because of the costs. Is that among the highest? I think it's the, I think it's the highest category we have. <coughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate it.